Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Asonet. And this beautiful day, too. Meditation is, Father, sometimes it's a struggle to believe what I can't see. Nevertheless, you've promised your faithful love and that you'll never leave me or forsake me. Help me to rest in that promise. This is found in our daily bread. The call to worship this morning is Psalm 22. From you comes my praise. In the great congregation, my vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people unborn, saying that he has done it. And if you can turn to page eight in the Pilgrim Hymnal and sing joyful, joyful, we adore thee. If you can join me in the invocation in Lord's Prayer. Cultivating God, we come as your children to grow and learn because you are our divine vine grower. God, we desire for you to abide within us and for your grace to be revealed anew daily. As your branches, we ask you to nourish us and continue growth. May you transform our hearts and minds as we forget. Sing your praises and engage in holy dialogue. May you help us to bear good fruit through the vine of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
The announcements can be found on the back of the bulletin. The flowers on the altar are given by Susan Sargent this morning. Please sign up for flowers in the Narthex. May 16th and 23rd are still open for this month. The book study, Naked Spirituality, is being held on Tuesdays in person at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Reverend Baker will be available on Fridays in his office for anyone who wishes to see him. Please contact him with your request. The Sunshine Committee is sending cards and paying visits to people in need of remembering. Please see Linda Wheelock, Don Souza, or myself with any names for people in need. Contributions of food to help people in need in the Freetown Berkeley area are welcome. Please leave your donations in the Narthex. We are looking for nursery volunteers when Sunday school starts up again. Please contact a member of the Pastoral Advisory Committee with any concerns or suggestions. Also, I want to say we um, got some New Century hymnals um, from the North Congregational Church, and I put two in everybody's pew. And in doing so, I did remove some of the Pilgrim hymnals because there was a lot of books. So if I removed one that has your name from your pew, I do apologize, and I'm happy to help you find it. Dan. I'm sorry. The numbers of the book, the hymns do not align with books of paper. Yes. Right, right. So we have numbers because let us know which book we're tracking. Yes, thanks for that. We do plan on getting um, letters indicating New Century or Pilgrim Hymnal. Today we just have the Pilgrim Hymnal, so there was no conflict there. Thank you, though. Are there any other announcements? Betty? Once again this year, I'm going to be participating with uh, Karen up in the pantry. We're going to relay the light um, to those people. You know, it's for the American Cancer Society who are remembering my mom. Um, this year, for a little incentive, some of you might have seen it on Facebook, um, this church has been very, very good about supporting that effort for me. But I'm asking for um, donations. A donation to get a dozen cookies of the trip of your choice. I still got to bring a flyer with all the different choices on it, but certainly I'll make whatever anybody wants. Um, and, and certainly, if you want to make a donation and not have cookies, that's cool too. But I can finally bake again, so I figured this is a way cookies for a cure. So between now and June 5th, when I um, actually go up to the campus, it's going to be great. Um, we'll be doing that. And you can let me know if there's anything you want. And I'm also hoping to get luminaries. Those are the bags that everyone's decorated. Quite frankly, we recycle them, so um, we have lots and lots when we put them out at night um, on the day of the event. But I was I was getting some bags, and if you want to buy one and decorate it for a loved one, um, you can do that as well. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Good morning, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I do have a few announcements uh, to share. Uh, first off, um, this week's uh, topic for our book study will be the word sorry. And it's sort of this idea of that we feel like we don't measure up to God's expectations for us. And I know that I feel that way quite a lot. And if you do too, and you'd like to just stop by and sort of meditate on that, uh, and how you actually are worthwhile and actually are loved by God, then you can, uh, then you, we would love to see you on Tuesdays at seven o'clock. Uh, we had a, uh, tr uh, just to answer um, Dan's uh, question, um, the, we are going to get some, again, colored um, numbers and letters for the, uh, for the sign. Uh, we, were st we actually were working that on Friday. Uh, we didn't quite solve the problem, but we definitely are aware of it. Um, we're going to have a uh, sort of a work day as necessary on May 15th from about 8 a.m. to noontime. 
This will be to sort of finish the process of sorting and moving around what's in the boxes. If you go downstairs, we have things uh, sorted on different tables. So there's one for the deacons, one for the Sunday school, one for the office, et cetera. And um, uh, we're gonna try to uh, move things out of there because we do have an event here that's gonna have its first uh, session or sort of its rehearsal. That's the Rainbow Workshop at, uh, on the Thursday, the 20th. So we wanna make sure everything is at least out of sight uh, by that by that time and this would be a good chance for us to get all hands on deck maybe by the time uh, that Saturday rolls around we've already sorted and filled everything and I'll certainly let you everybody know by uh, by email now I did get a um, notice from Don Souza this week she's not here with us today but she uh, often goes on Friday nights to uh, New Bedford. Uh, Don Bliss is the leader of a meal ministry down there. There's a different meal ministry each day and he's in charge of the one on Fridays. So uh, they are looking for more volunteers. So if you're interested, uh, please let Don or uh, Don Bliss, Don Souza that is, and I know, and we'll see what you can do to, uh, to facilitate that. I know that it's a great opportunity to help some people uh, in need, and it doesn't require a whole lot of work. You just show up, distribute the food. Uh, it's a really great ministry. Now is the time in our church service when we will now lift up our joys and our concerns. Uh, we have our continued prayers uh, for Manny Santos, Susan Lemos, for Christine Vaughn, for Gloria, Barbara Flanders, Leon Cudworth Sr., Jack Conway, and Julie Conway, uh, for Jen Currier, uh, for Betty O'Leary, uh, Noreen Davis, and uh, Chris Angus as well. <clears throat> I did have a prayer request from Chris Schultz. She is a member of the church in Brockton, but she attends the book studies, Bible studies, and she'll pop in from time to time. You may have seen her. But uh, she's on a prayer list, and one of the people that she is praying for was a woman who is 46 years old with a brain tumor. So I wanted to make sure that we helped her out in that prayer uh, action by praying for that woman as well. Are there any other uh, announcements, or sorry, not announcements, uh, prayer requests this morning? Yes. Yes. Well, sometimes it isn't a life-threatening problem. Sometimes it's just you need that pick-me-up. So hopefully that was that was good. Thank you. All right. Yes, Dick. Okay. Other prayer requests this morning? Yes, Mary. So continued prayers for James and also for the uh, Nucleus family uh, whose mother passed away this week. Other prayers this morning? Then let us all pray together. Loving God, it is you who gave life and breath to everyone in our world, and in you alone can we find life breath and meaning for ourselves and our world for those who have been blessed with an awareness of your shepherding care who look to you for guidance and nurture we give you thanks and we pray that you would unite us within your family to be an influence on others that they too may enjoy life within your family for those who are hungry and thirsty who are lost and alone who yearn to be given new direction new hope and new life we pray that you would care for them through us. Let us be seen and known as your faithful people in this community of faith to which you have given birth. Help us to uphold your name by living with faithfulness and trust in you. We pray today especially for Manny, Susan, for Christine, Gloria, for Barbara, Leon, Jack, Julie, Jen, Betty, Noreen, for Chris and James, for the new close family, and for all people uh, suffering from brain tumors, as well as all the other problems of life. Hear now the silent prayers of our hearts, lifting up those we have not named, while also listening in quiet to your word for us.
carried upon your shoulders, we find our refuge. In your gentle care, we find our home. And in your living spirit, we are united this day, Lord, as we offer to you our prayers in the name of your holy child, Jesus Christ, the guardian of our souls. Amen. <clears throat> Today we are invited to become deeply attached, close, and loyal as branches who are connected with Jesus Christ, our vine. In other words, we are to bear fruit with a spirit of love by helping each other, reaching out to each other, and encouraging each other in our daily faith pilgrimage. As it is written in the Wisdom Book of Ecclesiastes, that two are better than one, because if they fall, one will lift up the other. But for the one who is alone and falls, there is not another to lift that person up. So let our offering lift up one another in God's love that abides in times of sadness, loss, and grief. Let our offering lift up one another in God's love that abides in times of hopelessness, brokenness, and failure. Let our offerings be a thanksgiving of God's love that abides within us in times of hopefulness, forgiveness, unity, and peace. And let us accept God's invitation to be ever-present in times of deep despair and in times of great joy. So now let us offer ourselves in gratitude and with generosity as fruits representing the abiding goodness of God. If you have not already given after the service, please place your offering in the plates by the altar or by the exit. You can, of course, also mail your checks or give online. And now let us reflect on the marvelous love of our God. Each person. 
Let us pray. Generous God, we offer you the fruits of our time, talents, and resources in celebration of all that we have been given. Loving God, we give you thanks for all that we have and ask a special blessing on the fruits we have given back to help meet the needs of your beloved community. May the gifts nourish and strengthen the community to grow spiritually, emotionally, and physically. And this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning is number 230, Immortal Love Forever Full. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, but we're going to start with the Epistle Lesson, 1 John 4, 7-21, to which can be found in your Pew Bibles on pages 901-902. to Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, but God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the anointed atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us. Because he has given us his spirit, and we have seen and do testify that the Father was sent his son, has sent his Son as a Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because he is so, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. And the gospel lesson is John 15, one through eight, and can be found in the Pew Bible on page 794. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He, roos, he removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. 
just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Sends the readings. Hello again. All right. So when I was in ninth grade, um, I had a crush on a girl named Vanessa. All right. We attended a private school in Braintree and we both lived in Marshfield, all right, which was a bit of a schlep. She was a member of my uh, competitive math team. Uh, as you probably know by now, I am a massive nerd. And one day on the way back from a competition, I asked her out. Uh, she said no because she was already dating somebody back in Marshfield. Now, whether this was really a strong relationship or just an excuse to get me off her back, I'll never know. Now, obviously, at the time, I was disappointed. And in my romanticized teenage brain, I figured I now had a rival. Now, about the same time, I was also becoming very disillusioned with the high school that I was attending. My grades were excellent, but I felt like the rigor of the classes was lacking. Again, massive nerd. It seemed like the school was more interested in getting wealthy kids into prestigious colleges than actually challenging them uh, academically. I also had a problem with my drama teacher. Uh, when I was in elementary school, I had done several community theater shows with her, and apparently I had gotten on her bad side. And now she had become the drama teacher at my high school and decided that I was a terrible singer and actor and would not give me any roles. Now, frankly, I was feeling really miserable about my time at the school, and I figured it would be better to feel miserable at the public school back in Marshfield than to spend thousands and uh, tens of thousands of dollars a year being miserable at this private school. And so in a, I think, very bizarre turn of events or unusual turn of events, I was actively recruited by Marshfield High School. And one day I went to observe the classes to see if it would be a good fit for me. And other than clearly the less fancy facilities, um, it seemed like a very good fit for me. There was just one minor hiccup. During the classes, there was this one student who was a bit of a class clown. He would interrupt the teachers and draw attention away from the lessons and try to show how much he knew more than the teachers and generally made a fool of himself. But I said, okay, I'll have to deal with people like this. I'm still going to transfer to uh, Marshfield for 10th grade. And so then a few weeks into the coming fall term, we had an English field trip to Concord, Massachusetts to visit the museums at the homes of people like Louisa uh, May Alcott and other figures of the transcendentalist movement. And on the bus ride, I struck up a conversation with a boy named Tim, who incidentally was the same one who had been creating so much trouble when I had visited the previous spring. You know, we hit it off on that bus ride. We had a lot of common interests, and uh, we soon became best friends. And all throughout high school, we had a lot of fun together doing just all sorts of crazy adventures. We kept in touch throughout college, and we even lived together for a year after college before we kind of grew up and went our separate ways. But a few months after I'd become friends uh, back in high school with Tim, he told me that he had an ex-girlfriend that he, um, who had been going to a prep school in Braintree. And as you probably guessed by now, it was Vanessa. So in ninth grade, I had these two people that I very strongly disliked. I had this romantic rival and I had this class clown. 
And yes, less than a year later, I learned not only that they were the same person, but that person would become one of the most important people in my life. You know, one could write off this entire turn of events as just coincidence. And others might use terms like fate. Like Tim and I were destined to become best friends even before we met. I choose to interpret things to say that there is some sort of connection between us that somehow manifested itself in ways that I did not understand until later. It really seems like there are connections between people and things that are difficult to understand, but which nevertheless move us in a path that affirms those connections. And these strange links are not just a matter of some you know, idealistic philosophy or theology, but they are accepted by science as well. Physicists have uh, observed a phenomenon called quantum entanglement, where particles like photons or electrons or even small molecules uh, have been shown to be identically affected instantly across very large distances, such that it's, a, it's possible to influence an electron somewhere on Earth, and an electron, you know, light years and light years away would also be affected. So some connection between these particles exists beyond our expectations of space and time and causality. And while it is foolish to place God in the middle of a scientific theory to explain the unknown, I think that this idea of quantum entanglement is at least an echo of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God which binds all creation together in love. Both of our Bible lessons today are about love and connection. In our lesson from the Gospel according to John, Jesus says, I am the true vine. And when Jesus says, I am, in the Gospel according to John, you should definitely pay attention. Now this is not as famous as the I am the Good Shepherd, or I am the Resurrection and the Life, but it does express an important truth about our relationship with Jesus and with God. In this vine metaphor, the Father can be seen as the root. It's the unseen origin of our life and that which invisibly sustains us. Jesus is the vine, the visible connection to that source of life, the conduit through which love flows. And we are the branches which extend from the vine in countless directions while still maintaining that connection to the vine. We are all individuals, but those connections through God remain, binding us in ways that we rarely understand, and then sometimes only in hindsight. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. This fruit is the expression of love in the world, of care and charity and justice to the people and the world around us. The branches are supposed to bear fruit, but some branches do not. Jesus says that the Father removes every branch that bears no fruit, and that such a branch is thrown away and withers such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Jesus essentially lays out a stark choice. Abide in him and bear much fruit and joy, or separate from him and be doomed to misery and destruction. This is not exactly the kind and merciful Jesus who is at the heart of our faith. You know, we don't like to talk about Jesus as being wrathful. And all this talk of burning also evokes images of punishment in hell, which is something that churches like ours really don't like talking about. But I think that this expresses an overlooked truth about our life in God. When we are separated from God, from that source of life and love, we do wither. We find that our attempts to enrich the world, or even just ourselves, fail through our human imperfections. And eternally, if we disconnect ourselves from God's love through our own choice, since God forgives those who repent, we find ourselves isolated, 
perhaps living in a, a hell of our own choosing apart from the love of God. Jesus truly is the vine. And if we recognize the connection with God and through God with each other, we will find success. This vine allows for many expressions of individuality, but when we insist that there is no connection between ourselves and others, or that other people and the world around us are just resources that can be exploited for our own benefit, our lives, and even worse, the lives of others, can become quite hellish. Now, our, first, our other lesson comes from the uh, first letter of John, and it reinforces these ideas. Like the gospel, the letter focuses on our connection with God through love. It says, Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. The word love appears six times in these two verses, emphasizing that love is really the best metaphor for knowing the unfathomable God. The letter says no one has ever seen God. That root of love is unseen, but the vine of Jesus is. The letter says God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. We know that God is love, and we know that this through the love that Jesus shows us. Our faith or our trust in God that we have through this experience then allows us to express love in the lives of ourselves and others. The letter says, God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. However, this faith bears its fruit when we love one another. So as the letter says, if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. Like the gospel, the letter also alludes to God's judgment upon us. It claims that love allows us to stand boldly before God and not to fear. He sa it says that the fear of God's wrath and of punishment in hell is not only counterproductive, but is indeed the opposite of love. This is not, of course, the fear of the Lord that is often mentioned in the Old Testament, which is really more of a sense of awe or respect for God than, than terror, being afraid of God. And so this fear of wrath that I think many people have had over the centuries can really drive us away from God and into that withering life apart from God and apart from each other. And, and this is when our claims of love fall flat. For without recognizing that connection with God and others, we end up just using or hating other people. And no matter how often we confess our allegiance to God in church or in other public ways, the hatred of others always exposes us. As the letter says, those who say, I love God, and then hate their brothers and sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love a God whom they have not seen. Thus, our mission is clear. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Now, this is easier said than done. When people are selfish or cruel or are different from us, it's hard to love them. But love is not just an emotion that we, we feel in our hearts like, like joy or fear or anger. It's deeper than that. It's bigger than that. It's, it's more marvelous. It's, it's, more, it's more subtle. There is that connection between us, present and created by God, even if we cannot explain it. 
It's like those, those subatomic particles which are connected with each other beyond time and space, or, or like the relationship that I had with, with Tim, or with other people throughout my life. These connections that I never knew were there until they suddenly appeared. This connection to love is essential. It's essential if we want to make our world and our lives better. And not just sort of vainly grasp at fleeting happiness or power. Our connection to each other is a connection to love. And as the first letter of John reminds us, God is love. When we put our faith in our relationships with others and let our love bear fruit, that is when we truly confess our faith in God not just standing up and saying that we do. Through this faith, we can find more love in our lives, more true joy and peace. The more we love, the more we feel the love of God and the more we can love others, creating a positive feedback that stretches beyond death and across our understanding of space and time. But all this starts by showing love and consideration to ourselves, and not fearing God's wrath upon us for our imperfections. It means accepting that God loves us regardless of our behavior, and that God sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. We show our love for our families, for the people to whom we are most connected, looking beyond their own frustrating imperfections. And then we can build our relationship with, with friends and with neighbors. And get, getting out of our own heads, our own sort of places of sanctuary, and really enjoying the fellowship of others and the richness of the world around us. And then we can reach out to, to the strangers and, and even to our enemies and create a world that is full of justice and peace. Of course there will be setbacks in anything that we try to do, sort of rocks and even, even walls that bar the movement of our branches of love. But if we nurture that connection to the vine of Jesus and through him to each other, we can overcome any obstacle and we will indeed bear much fruit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the true vine that brings love to the world, often in mysterious ways. Continue to bless us with love and friendship throughout our lives. And this we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our communion hymn this morning is number 288. Let us break bread together. shall not hunger, you who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with all who hunger for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in the sharing of this life-giving bread. Let us pray. Holy God, our loving Creator, close to us as breathing and distant 
as the farthest star. We thank you for your constant love for all that you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus Christ, whom you have sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, death, and resurrection, and for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world. Gifted by the presence of your Holy Spirit, we offer ourselves to you as we unite our voices with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of love and majesty, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so we remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered the disciples for the feast of Pentecost. And Jesus took the bread. He broke it. And he said to the disciples, This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ has died. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. The body of Christ, take and eat. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. The cup of salvation. Take and drink. Now let us pray. We are grateful, loving God, that through communion you knit us together into one body, the body of Christ. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, help us use them to build up one another in love, serving as Christ's hands and feet, Christ's branches and fruit in the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is one of my favorites, number 228, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
So now let us go forth, thankful that we have come. So let us go forth now renewed in God's abiding love, and let us go forth rejoicing in the good news of Jesus Christ, whose love will never let us go. Amen. Thank you.